Well, uh, you know, one of the questions that I struggled with for a very long time, actually, hmm. uh, was this question about the role of a teacher oh, yes. in the cultivating of uh, non-dual yeah. awareness. Because on the one hand, I knew upon reflection that I have, I have been blessed with so many incredibly great teachers going back to, hmm. you know, my kindergarten oh, yeah. experience. Right that, you know, I pause and give gratitude for an experience. But there's, there's a different valence in, uh, you know, mystical practice, non-dual traditions, where people will talk about the necessity of a certified teacher, mm. which I both incorporated, but then I also incorporated, you know, the news that I would constantly see about <laughs> teachers <laughs> and their abuse of that right. position that seems to be endemic and not really the fault right. of the uh, individuals involved. So I was wondering what your perspective was on that. Well, there's a couple, couple of quite good questions in there. I mean, teachers in general, um, there's some famous stories, but <clears throat> the main thing is like everybody's a teacher. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't think they're, I mean, Ramon Maharshi has been enormously important in my awakening in my life. And so um, I would call him whatever you want to call him, but he's been tremendously useful for me. But many people have been. It can be the person in the supermarket line. It can be somebody at the DMV. It can be somebody you run into at, at Starbucks. It can be one of your students you're in the classroom. Uh, teachers don't have to come with dreadlocks and you know black robes and long beads and stuff. Teachers' messages come from all kinds of places. I mean, they come. We talk about bibliomancy. I mean, a book pops out the shelf one you just have to read. Now that's a teacher. I mean, that book has been delivered to you and that book is there for some reason. Mm. And you read that and you say, well, who, who was the teacher there? Well, the book. Yeah, but, not, but somebody, what, what moved the book into my presence in the way that I could be work from it? But I, I really, I, I don't compartmentalize people off into teacher boxes. And, and I, I don't, I try very hard not to become a teacher to have this, you know, up and down relationship. I and mean, to me it's much more we're all her dancing. We're all one thing. And so get over it, people. <laughs> really get over it. And just recognize, you know, we're just all here together trying to work our way through this thing and share as much as we can and learn as much as we can from every place and everybody we can possibly learn from. Right. And that's, you know, I always knew that intuitively. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's a black walnut tree out the window there that yeah. has been yeah. one of my great teachers, yeah. actually. Yeah. I mean, yes, exactly. The whole cosmos is our, is a teaching entity yeah. uh, in my yeah. experience. Absolutely. And so when, one of the downsides of saying, ah, okay, I've found this teacher, mm. is that it blots out all of the other teaching, what, whatever the merits of that particular person or, or mm. being, that uh, we, we, we don't see what's right in front of us. Exactly. And, and the teaching is, in fact, about being with and learning from what is right in front of us. Exactly. Um, at the same time, I, I, I do love and practice this idea of, for lack of a better term, and I'm open to better terms for it, of spiritual friendship. Oh, yeah. That, that within yeah. the collective of people that are themselves experiencing uh, the way in which consciousness uh, is something much larger than themselves, one comes across people, again, often very serendipitously, oh. like the opening of a, a book. Uh, mm -hmm. We ourselves came into contact serendipitously. Yeah. Uh, and, we say, and, and there's just a feeling where you say, oh yeah, there seems to be some sharing happening here. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and the condition of that sharing really seems to be, a great deal of the time, that it not be that up-down uh, modality. Yeah. And in fact, you know, to the extent I've ever had any kind of blockages in either learning from other people or have them learn with me, is that there's been some kind of unconscious or implicit assertion of this up-down relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, we, we talked earlier about, about money for teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why... Yeah, I'll, I'll pay you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that's, that's one, of the, one of the pernicious parts of exchanging, you know, money. Yeah. For, even if it's only 15 cents. Right. I mean, that does establish up and down. Mm -hmm. And as you teach as a very effective professor, 
I mean, the fact you're in the front of the classroom and you're getting paid to teach them and they're paying tuition to be there, it's difficult uh, to work across that because they really, you know, you're put up there societally, culturally, and, mm -hmm. and from an academic standpoint. So, and I know you work very hard, so you're very good at it, coming down to being one with them and understanding exactly where they're coming from and working with them in really unusual ways. But many of your peers, you know, want to be up here. I have peers. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but the, there are people, many people who want to be up here, and they want you to be down here. And that really does freeze the amount of communication that can take place. Yeah, and it, 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 it locks people into roles, yeah. right, where yeah. one is the transmitter and one is the receiver. Right. or you know, Knower and not knower. And then what happens is that, you know, you just remain receiver until you become transmitter and then you replicate the whole yeah. trans yeah. transmitter-receiver uh, operation, which really, I mean, it must work for somebody, but uh, I, I don't know who that, that person is. So but, but, you know, One of the amazing things, but, uh, no, no, it's fine. One of the amazing things is, is when you begin working with people and work with them, yeah. it's amazing how much you learn from them. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think, well, I, you know, but this person comes to you and says, oh, I don't know anything, this person knows everything. No, not at all. And you find out, just open up, let, the, let them go of this thing and just be present. And it's astonishing. Everybody has something to teach you. Everybody. And just be aware of that and on, not honor not because you have to honor it, but because you keep seeing it over and over and over again. I'm so excited when somebody comes into my space this way with whatever and you can put the, <laughs> what what you can learn from each other oh, yeah. and it almost never is it just a, it's almost never I'll say never one way yeah you learn both ways enormously there's a flow of information energy back and forth communication right so to go back to that example of bibliomancy yeah. which as you know is one of my favorite it words it just means word. like you know, you. A, a, a book, you know, opens or falls off the shelf or you open a page at random and there's a passage that speaks to you. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly put it, saying, okay, now who's the teacher there? You know, is it yeah. the book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, got, it's got to be that the entire cosmos unfolding for 13.7 exactly. billion years yeah. delivered that, that book teaching. to you at this time exactly when you needed it. Right. And so one grows precisely to the extent that one can experience the teaching that's available in every dimension yeah. of one's life. And to the extent that one locates a teacher in yeah. a place, mm -hmm. almost inevitably we're going to uh, lose sight of that fact. Absolutely. Absolutely.